So we're going to compare and contrast two different ways to find a binomial probability. The first way is kind of directly using some technology, using binomial CDF or the proper commands from Google Sheets. But let's associate ourselves with a problem, and we'll calculate it the first way, and then the second way is with a normal approximation to that binomial probability. So it says 29.2% of people have sleepwalked. And we're going to look at a sample of 455 and find the probability that, excuse me, not a sample of 455, we're going to look at a sample of 1,480 and find the probability that at least 455 have sleepwalked. Well, the first thing we should do is convince ourselves that this is actually a binomial random variable. So what do we have to do for that? What are the assumptions we have to check? Yeah, we have to check and see if it fits, right? So let's work on that. So we want to see, do we have a fixed number of trials? Well, yeah, 1,480. Are they independent? Sure. If somebody sleepwalks, doesn't affect the probability that you sleepwalk. Two outcomes? Yeah. Sleepwalked or not? Good. Yes or no? Same probabilities. Well, we actually kind of get that from the 5% rule. I'm assuming you would draw the sample without replacement. But 1,480 is certainly probably less than 5% of any population I could imagine us sampling from. You know, adults in the United States, adults in the world, adults in the state of Michigan. It's going to be less than 5%. Remember the alternative here was to say that it's the 20 times rule. If you multiply that by 20, what would you get? Probably uh, um, 28,000, almost 30,000 people. So most populations I can imagine would be greater than 30,000 people. So we're okay on all of these assumptions. So here's what we want to calculate. The probability that X is greater than 455, actually greater than or equal to, and that little equal to part is important. It might help us to calculate this using the complementation rule, but let's look at things visually. We want this probability here. I called it A. A is the event that you have at least 455 people who have sleepwalked. Now, to complement that, A bar, does A bar go up to and including 455, or is it going to be less than that? It does not, A bar does not include 455. It goes up to 454. So, Remember, these things are complementary, but they don't overlap. It's one or the other. So A bar goes up to 454. And that's an important point here to notice that it goes up to just 454. Because the way the, the CDF works, the cumulative density function, or the way you can use things in Google Sheets with true, I'd want to get the area to the left of... 454, that is a probability to the left of 454, and then subtract it from 1 to get this probability over here and what I'll call the right tail. So you can do that on the graphing calculator with 1 minus the binomial CDF of 1480, which is your N, and this is your probability of success, and that's X. And that'll give you directly, let's call it 0 0.1012 is what that would round to. Likewise, you can do that on Google Sheets. You just got to use the binomial distribution here, except make sure that you use true. That way it'll add up all these probabilities starting at probability of x equals 0 plus probability of x equals 1 all the way up to probability of x equals 454. That's what's going to happen when you put in true. It's going to add up all those probabilities. If I had false here, it would just give me the probability that x equals 454 and nothing else. So with the true there, you add that command in in Google Sheets, and you should get exactly the same thing we got from my graphing calculator. And that's nice. You get the exact answer, no messing around, you're done. So that's one way you can do this. That's not the way they did this in section 6.6. .6. Section 6.6, .6, 
they did a normal approximation to this curve. Now, I think this comes from days when we didn't have as much technology around as we do now. So let's just look at it because it's a good review of a couple things, including how to find the mean and standard deviation of a binomial random variable. But are we okay with uh, the first approach? I kind of like that, and I don't really see the need for the second approach anymore. But let's go through it anyways. So first things first, you need to find the proper mean and standard deviation. From a binomial random variable, the mean is n times p. The standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. So you get these two numbers. That's the normal curve we're going to work with, the one with that mean and that standard deviation. We want to find the area to the right of 455, which is right here. But remember, when we're using a continuous random variable to approximate a discrete random variable, you got to add the continuity correction. Continuity correction. And that turns that 455 into 454.5. So we're going to find the area to the right of 455, excuse me, 454.5 underneath this curve. If you're doing that with your graphing calculator, you would use normal CDF. You'll never use normal PDF in this class. Normal CDF of X, that's your lower limit. Your upper limit is really infinity. It's not very easy to type in infinity under your graphic calculator, so you just type in a really, really big number. A bunch of nines or a one followed by a bunch of zeros, whatever you find convenient. And then your mean and standard deviation. So that would be your normal CDF, and you get something which is pretty close to what we got up above, right? About 1.1008, call it. So it's, it's really a good approximation. Here's the command from Google Sheets. You do one minus this normal distribution. So again, you'd have, let's see, x, mu, sigma, and true. This is going to find the area, just this part is going to find the area to the left of 454.5. But since I want the area to the right, I'll subtract that from 1 and end up with the exact same thing that I did get from my graphing calculator. So you've got two different approaches here. Both give you, you know, a pretty good answer for that probability. I'm just not sure I see the need for doing it this way anymore. Laura? Exactly. Because this is just going to give you the exact probability, and that's it. The reason for doing this you know, continuity correction and doing things this way is because in the old days, you didn't have these nice commands that would calculate all these probabilities. You had to calculate these probabilities one at a time. So that means calculating the probability that x equals 455 plus probability that x equals 456, 457. Wow, that's over a thousand probabilities you'd have to calculate directly. Um, one at a time. Even if you use the complement, you're still looking at 454, 455 probabilities that you have to calculate doing it with a complement. So that that's really something you probably want to avoid. And you can do that with the continuity correction. But our technology has progressed that everyone's got this available to them. So it's nice to review the binomial distribution and you know, look at the continuity correction, but I just don't really see the need to do it that way anymore. Um, you can. It's up to you. One way or another on the test, do expect a problem from this section, but if you want to do it directly, like this up here, that's great. If you do it down here, do an approximation, that's fine too. Just be prepared to do one of them. How many people are going to do it with the normal approximation? And second method. Yeah, all right. <laughs> For the benefit of my viewing audience, nobody raised their hand. <laughs> all right. Good deal. Any other questions or follow-up on this example here? Okay. Good luck with it.